What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender add-on tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out an add-on that allows us to create a complete city inside of Blender. So this can be very useful if you're trying to create context for a model or if you're just looking for a city that you can render in order to create images or something like that. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so today's add-on is called Blender OSM. And so Blender OSM is an add-on that you can use in order to create cities as well as terrain and roads and other things like that inside of Blender. And so there's two versions of this add-on. So there's a free version, which will bring in your buildings like this with no, uh, with no textures on them. You can also use it to bring in terrain and some other things like that. And then there's also a premium version with additional features. So the premium version, and I will link to both of these in the notes down below, is about $18. And this one imports buildings with UV mapping as well as materials. Um, it also comes with textures that emulate lights and uh, the ability to import forests and trees and 3D objects as well as satellite images on your terrain. So for, for about $18, you can get a bunch of additional features inside of your Blender models for creating cities. So I am going to do this in the premium version just so you can see what's available in here. Just note that with the free version, you can do some of this but not all of this so if you want to start with the free version um, you can definitely download that from the links down below as well um, I will note this also gives you the ability to name a price so if you do want to support this developer even if it's a couple bucks if you decide to download the free version supporting developers is always great because it allows them to keep developing and keep doing what they're doing and bringing us great new tools and so when you download this, um, first thing to know is it has some pretty substantial documentation. So the documentation um, gives you pretty great instructions on how exactly this whole thing works. So if you ever get stuck, make sure to go to those documentation pages. Note that there's a documentation page for the premium version as well as a documentation for the free version. So um, if you ever do get stuck and need more information, visit these links in the notes down below the video. And so when you first install this, what you're going to do, and let's go ahead and start a new Blender file. So when you first install this, um, you're going to install it just like you would any other add-on. So you just go to install and then you go find the zip file. And then once you bring that in, if we look at this, you can see how there's a few things we need to set up down here. So the first thing is it's going to ask for a directory to store your downloaded OpenStreetMap and terrain files. So I just put this in my add-ons folder um, so that uh, I know exactly where to look for this, but you need to set a folder for that. Um, if you get the premium version or the paid version, um, there's a directory that you can put the assets that come with it, so the building materials and the vegetation and the other things like that. So I put those in the same folder just for ease of use and then there's also a note right here where you need to get a map box access token and so there's more instructions on this inside of the documentation if you scroll down it's a little ways down the page but basically there's a note in there stating that you need to go into map box that's the provider for the map information and you need to sign in and get an access token so that you can download materials for free from map, map box so if you follow this link it'll take you to map boxes page you can figure that out and so when you get to that page um, when you go through that process there will be an access token on this page that you can copy and then you can put right here. You can actually click on this button right here in order to get that map box access token. So you can click on this and then it'll pop up a map box page that you can uh, use to sign in. But once you get that map box token, then you can download the satellite imagery. And so once we have this all set up, we can go ahead and we can close out of this. So this is gonna give us a menu on the right hand side of the page that we can use in order to do all of our importing. And you can access that by tapping the N key on your keyboard and going down to the OSM tab. So this is where all of your options are going to be for your different map data. And so the way that this works is this imports data based on coordinates. And so initially that's a little bit um, intimidating, but it doesn't need to be because there's a really easy way to get those coordinates. You just click on the select button right here what that does is that pops up a page where you can select the imagery that you want. So for example, let's say that I wanted to import some imagery from downtown Denver. So we'll scroll in to 
let's say about right here. So let's say I wanted to bring in some of the roads and buildings from this area around the Rockies Stadium. So what you would do is you would find the area that you want, then you can click on the button for Show Selection Rectangle. Note that you can't really drag and move that around. So if you wanna move or zoom out, um, you can click that Show Selection Rectangle again in order to update that based on your new view. So you can also drag these little corners in order to select the area for the buildings that you wanna download. So I'm gonna pull in some of these lower downtown buildings as well as the course field area. Um, and we'll import that into Blender. And so what we wanna do is once we've found the area that we wanna import, you can click on this button for copy. As Soon as you click on the button for copy, it's gonna give you a little note that says successfully copied. And then if you go back into Blender, you can just type in paste. Notice how when you paste this, those coordinates get updated inside of this add-on. And so now you're ready to import. And so let's take a look at our import options. So if you click on this little drop down right here, you can see that this is gonna give you the option to import OpenStreetMap items. It's gonna give you the option to import terrain, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's gonna give you an option to import your image overlay. So that's gonna be your satellite imagery. And then there's also a GPX option. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure what this is. If you go in the documentation, it says that the documentation is still under development. So we'll focus on the first three for right now. And so let's start by importing our image overlay. And so our image overlay is gonna allow us to import our image that's going to go in this area. And notice how when we do this, and we'll talk more about terrain in a second, don't worry about that for right now. For now, we're just gonna import a flat image. But you can see how down below, um, this gives you a few different options. We're gonna leave them by default, and we're just gonna click on import. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna import our image from Mapbox and place it inside of our 3D space. So it's basically gonna bring this in as a plane, and it's gonna apply those images to that terrain. So you can see how basically what this allowed us to do is this allowed us to bring in a flat plane with our city image on top of it. One thing to note is I'm getting clipping on the back side here. That's because this is so big that our camera clipping is automatically clipping it out. If you want to change that, you can go up to your view options and change your clipping length. So usually to do that, I change my length units to miles and I set this to something like three miles. So if I set my clipping to three miles, then it's not clipping out the back of this image anymore. And so this allowed us to bring in our image. And um, if we bring, bring in terrain, you can also drape this image across that terrain. So the image overlay allows us to bring in our image. Now let's take a look at our open street map options. And so there's really three options on here. There's the option for 3D realistic, which allows you to bring in your buildings, as well as 3D simple and 2D. So in this situation, let's start by bringing in realistic buildings. So to do that, you can check the box for import buildings. And notice that there are some options for changing your default roof shape. In this area, most of our roofs are flat, so we don't really need to worry about that. And you can also set this to have a percentage of lit windows. That's going to bring in a texture with lit windows that'll basically light your scene if it was like a night scene. So let's say, for example, that I wanted my lit windows to be 30%. We can go ahead and check that box. You can also adjust things for your different level heights. So a lot of these buildings have heights built in automatically, but you can use this in order to adjust those heights as well. So you can dictate how tall the buildings are going to be. In this situation, I'm gonna leave the rest of this as is, and we're just gonna click on the button for import. And this is gonna take a while. It's going to seem like um, Blender has locked up. It hasn't actually locked up. It's just reaching out to the server, getting the information, then actually building the 3D buildings. Depending on the size of the area, Area that you've brought in, this can be kind of time consuming. So try not to bring in areas that have more information than you need, just because you're gonna do a lot of sitting and waiting. So try to just bring in what you need and not worry about the rest of it. All right, so now if we look at this, you can see that what this did is this went and it got the building data from OpenStreetMap and it used it in order to create buildings. And if you look at these buildings, what you're gonna notice is you're gonna notice this actually came in here and it applied textures to these buildings. Now I will note, there's no way for this add-on to go in and get realistic 
textures um, from any kind of image or anything like that. So these are just kind of generic textures to get placed on your buildings. If you want your buildings to have more realistic textures, you'd probably have to pick a few and then just edit those textures yourself, which is possible, but we're not gonna talk too much about that in this video. But notice how what this did is this brought in all of the buildings um, that fit inside of the footprint of the area that we had selected. So you can use the 3D Realistic in order to import those buildings. If you're using the free version, um, I don't know if the 3D Realistic just doesn't show up in here or if it just doesn't bring in the textures, but I don't believe these textures are included in the free version. So one other thing to note about this is a lot of these light or a lot of these windows are lit because we told it to give us 30% lit windows. So if we were to go to rendered view, you can see how 30% of those windows on these textures are actually lit up and casting light into our scenes. You can actually use this to create a night city scene as well. So that's how you would import your buildings. Notice that these all get brought in and there's an option in here to import them as a single object, or if you uncheck this, it would bring them in as multiple objects. But you can turn these on and off just by clicking the little button right here, the little eye, in order to hide these. So you can turn these off and it brought them all in in, in a single object. So in addition to being able to do this with our buildings, we can also import some other items using either the 3D Simple or the 2D. So in this situation, for example, let's say that we wanted to go ahead and bring in some roads and water objects. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check every box in here except the buildings box. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna go back to the server and it's gonna use the OpenStreetMap data in order to generate roads and walks and other things like that. So if we click on the import button again with these checked, it's gonna do the same thing where it sits and thinks for a while and then it's going to generate those roads and some of the other data inside of our model. All right, so now if we take a look at this, you can see that what this has done is this has imported our roads. So it's brought those in as objects. It's also brought in our railways as a separate object and it's created water objects for the water areas. There's also some areas in here that are marked as green areas. So those green areas are basically areas that are marked as vegetation inside of OpenStreetMap. So this has been brought in as well. Right now these roads are being created using a curve. So if you're to tab into these for edit mode, for example, you can see how this is just a number of lines that are then generating some geometry in here, or some meshes in here. If you do wanna come in and edit things like um, if you want to edit things like textures, you can select a road, right click and click convert to mesh. So if you convert that to mesh and then select it, you can see how this is now geometry that you can use in order to apply a different texture or a different color or other things like that. So you can convert these to mesh. Um, just note that by default when they get created, you can't initially do that. You have to right click on them and actually convert them to that real mesh geometry. And so now let's talk a little bit about creating terrain and then applying our images to our terrain. So we'll go ahead and we'll take this and save it and then create a new file. So we'll do a new, general, and then we'll just tap the in, in key and go back into OpenStreetMap. And so let's say we wanted to bring in an area that has some more terrain associated with it. So what I've done is I've selected an area in Colorado, which is conifer. So conifer is an area that's up actually inside or up in the mountains. And so it's very hilly. So I wanted to bring this in because it's a good example of the way that terrain would come in. So we're just gonna select an area over here. We'll copy our coordinates and then we'll go back into Blender and we'll paste our coordinates. So this time what we wanna do is we wanna select the option for terrain. So when we bring in terrain, what this is gonna do is this is actually gonna go find the terrain data and bring it in. So we're gonna go ahead and click on the button for import and that's gonna bring this terrain data in. Notice how the terrain data came in pretty quickly. Um, we are gonna to wanna to change our clipping again just so that we can see all of it. So our terrain data comes in, if you tab into it, you can see it a little bit better. Um, but one thing about it is it doesn't have any, doesn't have any satellite data applied to it yet. For that, 
what you want to do is go back into OpenStreetMap and now we want to import our image overlay and notice how this does this automatically but if it doesn't you can select it basically what you want to do is you want to select the terrain that you've brought in inside of the image overlay function what that's going to do is that's going to overlay this image on top of this terrain and so once we've done that we just want to click on the button for import and you can see how this tells you how many tiles it's downloading. So this is downloading 110 image tiles and then it's gonna apply it to our mesh. So it's gonna take a little while for that to work. So we're just going to let this bring that imagery in. All right, so if we look at this, you can see that this has actually done a really good job of putting our image data on this terrain. So now we can see where our roads are and everything else. So we've imported an image and overlaid it on top of this terrain. So now let's take a look at what our buildings would do if we were to bring those in. So we're gonna bring in our realistic buildings. Notice how again, this selects our terrain area when we click on the import button. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna import our buildings and since we have a terrain selected, it's going to basically place them on top of that terrain instead of them just being flat. So that means all your buildings aren't like inside of your terrain or anything like that. All right, so if you look at this, you can see how what this did is this brought a number of different buildings in and it sits them basically on top of your terrain. So you can use this in order to import these buildings um, and place them on your terrain rather than through your terrain. So it's good for creating like mountain communities and other things like that as well. And then we can do the same thing with some of our simple stuff. So like forests or roads and paths. So we're gonna leave forests alone for right now because I think this would bring in a lot of different trees. We're just gonna run everything else. So I don't think there are any railways, but we'll go ahead and leave those on. And we're just going to click on import for those as well. And notice that these have terrain set. So it's going to place these on top of the terrain. And it'll take a little while in order to create this geometry. So one thing you may notice is this brings in these green areas to indicate vegetation areas. You can uncheck that or you can also turn that off when that gets brought in if you don't like the way that that looks. You can see how this is really good for creating terrain and buildings on terrain as well as flat areas. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Did you know about this add-on? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.